The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good, Billy Ray. Feeling good, Lewis. Let's take a look at the German DAX and also the FTSE. I posted those charts in there for you. Uh, you can walk away with this by looking at those charts, and you can still see that it's in a downtrend. They haven't rallied anywhere near what we have here. Uh, there was comments this morning on Bloomberg, the fact that the NASDAQ is only 500 points from its all-time high. Folks, when you're talking about that NASDAQ, you're talking about five stocks, Microsoft, Apple, you know, uh, Microsoft, Apple, uh, I can't remember. The other. Microsoft and Apple is 20 percent. But anyway, uh, you, you, they're just so heavily capitalized that those big companies run the whole thing. So I think at 10 stocks is the whole NASDAQ. So that's not the market. You know, that's for sure. Now, what happened overnight? Just from uh, you know a numbers point of view, uh, we did make a 61 percent retracement. Uh, uh oh, am I right on that? No, I think it was a 50 percent retracement. Oh, what did I do with that chart? All I know is that high overnight rang the bell, so I have to go back and look where it is. I'll get it during the break, but son of a gun, I thought I had it here and I don't have it. Um, here's one other chart that I, boy, that's just frustrating as heck. Just a second here, get this up here. This is a, uh, a interesting chart that we got here from our good friend um, Rich Anderson. You'll notice here, this is the put call ratio, and this is the lowest reading for buying puts that we've had since the top was put in. So you can see here that uh, nobody's buying puts anymore. They're all buying calls. So that usually is a sign that maybe the market's a little bit overbought. Now, remember, folks, we are coming in to this weekend here with Mother's Day, and then the, the days 11th and 12th are very, very big days. Norm Winsky, is our guest, talked about it uh, quite a bit. If you take a look at this uh, Bradley model, this is the Bradley model uh, with gold, uh, with the overlay for gold. There's no overlay on it, but it's a, the key, key dates for gold. But you'll see that May 11th day is going to be a big day for just about everything, the 11th and 12th. So, you know, hang on to your hats because there might be something big happening, you know, over the weekend. But, you know, in fact... Uh, this was just, folks. I'm a I'm a technician, and I'm telling you, folks. I, I have during this time, during these times, it's the most difficult time because they throw every single piece of fundamental uh, information at you that you could possibly ask for. And believe me, as as a technician, you have to fight it off like the plague. By the way, speaking of the plague, my good friend Byron Tucker was able to extricate himself from the, um, the, the mountain house out there in Connecticut, and he flew from Hartford, Connecticut into Chicago on his way to Phoenix, Arizona. There were only 30 people on the flight that usually held 140, but when he got to Chicago... Uh, and they've re re remodeled a lot of Chicago during this time when everything is down. Uh, it was business as normal. It was packed. He was on an A330, and it was full, 300 people. And half were wearing masks, half weren't. There was no food service, and there were two Nazi stewardesses. He said they were so rude that it was just unbelievable. Uh, but he got there, and he got back to Phoenix okay. So there is some flying going on out there. And uh, believe me, folks, uh, the social distancing thing is going to be stretched to a really thin line here and we're probably going to find out here in about two weeks whether this thing is actually going to show some uh, you know increase in uh, uh, infections and also increase in deaths but uh, from what we're hearing from Florida because it's hot down there and it's hot in Phoenix they're going to be 104 today uh, you know it doesn't grow as well during those hot conditions okay now something big is going to happen to Bitcoin and I'm going to be start following Bitcoin folks I've been fighting it for two years but uh, John Jameson has told me and uh, now is the time you'll notice here folks this is a long-term Bitcoin chart going back to 2012 all right. Now, you see that first little box there at 2012. That's when having occurred. That's mean when half the Bitcoins are out there, they just have it. They just cut in half. Why? It's a technical thing. I don't know what it was. You'll see the next one in 2016. Okay. And we got the next one coming in on May the 15th. And you can see what's happened to those after they've done the halving. 
So it's basically, it's if this were an Apple stock, you say, okay, there's only going to be half of the amount of Apple stock available to you after that date. So that's what we're watching. The problem with that Bitcoin stuff and the cryptocurrencies is there's there's so many of them, you have to find out which ones you want to look at and what, what their function is. And uh, that's the main thing. There's, I think there's a several thousand Bitcoins, uh, but we're following the ones that look pretty interesting. And they're so cheap that it's, if you're right, you're going to make a lot of money. But, you know, if you're wrong, you know, you're going to lose a little bit of money. So that's the whole key to, to investing. So we'll watch to see what's going back. Anyway, let's get to Bitcoin and take a look at it, because I had several questions about it this morning. And here is the first question. We'll get this up here so everybody can take a look at it. This is where we are in Bitcoin on this chart. Everybody's talking uh, about this expanding triangle that is here, and it is a flat, it is a, no question about it. It is a it is a pennant. There's no question about it. You'll notice that red arrow up there, folks. Uh, now, this is a long-term chart going back many years, but when we were there, uh, you know, we were making a three-drive to a top pattern, ABCD style, at uh, 19,000. It the, this Bitcoin didn't quite get to got to 19,500. Then you look at the blue arrow. That was a 78% retracement of the low that we made back in two, 2017. And then if you look at the blue arrow on the far right, that was a perfect Gartley pattern, folks. Uh, you can see it was a 78% retracement there at uh, roughly 5,000, and it was an ABCD pattern. And now we're breaking above those lines at 10,000 right now. And that is that is a that's a bullish sign, folks. I don't know how, how where it's going to go from here, but you you uh, like you say you can't fight the tape. If we look at Bitcoin on a little bit more of a scientific level, like we try to do, looking at these numbers, you'll we'll get this up here. You'll be able to see that uh, we made that 1.618 expansion down there at uh, at that 4,000 level. That's where that Gartley pattern came in. It was a perfect 1.618 from the November low to the February high to the March low. Exactly 1.618. That would make that a three drive to a bottom pattern. And as you can see now, we've had an acceleration uh, to the upside here. And we're just about ready, you know, to break this thing out. And it, it could really start to run, or it could it could back off. But longer term, uh, it still looks pretty good. There was no, this was not a situation where you had a um, a bubble. You know, it's just something that uh, you know sold off. It sold off from nineteen thousand down to uh, I think thirty two hundred. But if you looked at that on a log scale, that was not even a three eight two percent thirty eight percent retracement of the whole thing. So it certainly doesn't f fulfill the the characteristics of a bubble. A bubble once it busts, it's over. You know, we've seen it in Global Crossing and WorldCom and, you know, so many of these other things, but uh, we'll have to wait and see what's going to happen here. I have a couple comments that I want to cover here after we come back from the break, and I also want to point out the uh, the retracement that we were looking at in the Dow Jones because I, I had it all ready to go, and for some reason, for some reason, I don't know where it is, and I want to get it up here because that's the only one that, that hit it spot on, and I think it's important that we, uh, that we take a look at it because I'm a numbers person, folks, and when these numbers hit, you're supposed to, up. Oh, I got it. It'll be up here for you in just a second, 877-927- 6648. If you're not currently using the Taz Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The Taz Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today, and you'll find the Taz Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. 
Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. TFNN is launching an open house for our Tiger's Den. For a limited time, you can get a 30-day free trial to the Tiger's Den. Just enter promo code OPEN at checkout and pay nothing for 30 days while you try out your Tiger's Den membership as part of our open house. With market volatility at an all-time high and people all over the world working from home if possible, TFNN is hosting an open house in our Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is an interactive chat room that runs all day where other Tigers and Tigresses discuss trading ideas with the hosts and members along with charts and current market news as well as live access to the charts the hosts use during their programs join us for the tiger's den open house begin your den membership today by just entering open at checkout and pay nothing while you try things out for 30 days for all the details and to start your den membership today visit the front page of tfnn.com don't miss out on the tfnn tiger's den open house taking place now sign up today Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Okay, we're back, folks, and I posted the chart of the Dow Jones Industrial Average. You can see it last night. Uh, it's around 1 o'clock in the morning, I guess. Uh, it uh, made its 61% retracement there, and then we backed off a little bit, so it hasn't really done much. Remember, the Dow really doesn't count, folks. It's the least of the four major indices, uh, S&P being first, the Russell being second, NASDAQ being third and the Dow Jones being the last one based on open interest and volatility. So, and it's only 30 stocks and they're not cap weighted. So, you know, that 618 retracement is a little bit suspect. David White has posted the the quote of the year, and I have to re repeat this. David, I love this one. Every sunken ship has a chart. Stops are there so you don't have to go down with the ship. Amen, brother. You got that one. That is a good one. That's, that's really terrific. Okay, let's move on here. Uh, oh, one other question. Uh, someone's asked, uh, there's a rumor going around that J.P. Morgan has accumulated 880 million ounces of silver. Good luck with that, boys and girls. Uh, that is uh, stop and think. Well, first of all, you got to figure out how much it weighs, where you're going to store it, and how you keep people from stealing it. And I'm sure they have a way to do that. But 880 million is not. Uh, that's not in the cards, folks. That's so many. That's so many contracts above the open interest that you can't even count. But the, but remember, folks. Yeah, Warren Buffett. This was going back to 1996 or 97, and Buffett came out and said, "I own 25 percent of all the." The above ground silver in the world is what he said. Those were his actual comments. I've got it on the chart. And uh, the next the next month, I think that was April or March. In April, when his uh, uh, Berkshire Hathaway report came out, they showed zero silver. He had sold it all, and it moved up a dollar an ounce that day. And that was the top. And then it went went back from 14 all the way back to eight again. So just because you hear these things, you know, this is why I'm a technician. I don't believe anybody. And uh, so it's let the charge. If, if the prices are going up, there's more buying. If prices are going down, there's more selling. That's the bottom line. Now, let's talk just a tiny bit here about the gold contract. Let's get this up here to look at it, because here we're still looking at the June gold. Let's get this up here so we can be on the same page here. And this is my two cents worth, folks. That's all it is. This is the June contract. You'll notice last night we made a perfect ABCD pattern. Exactly 
exactly at 1735. The high was 1735.50. Then we've dropped down to 1717 uh, so far this morning, but that's a, that is a perfect ABCD pattern in a downtrend. Now, one of the things that I've been watching is the fact that that GLD contract uh, has uh, almost made a new high, and the GDX, the miner stocks, has made a new high, and it's setting at a 1.27 expansion. But if we look closely at what's happening in the open interest in the gold, let's just do that right now because hey, and this is this is my uh, my two cents worth, folks. And that's all it is. And if you pay more than that, you've overpaid. Hold on just a second here. Get this up here to take a look at it. All righty, move this over here. Okay, uh, here's the open interest in the gold. You'll see the June contract is the leader with 310,000 contracts. It was down 6,800 yesterday, but you'll notice the August contract, which is the next leading one, it was up 14,000, so giving it a net change of about, uh, it figured out to be about 8,000 contracts. But look at the difference, folks, between the number of people in the June and the number of people in the August. That's a 200 hundred thousand ounce uh, difference and how is that going to be made up remember when we were watching the crude oil remember when may crude oil came into delivery uh, on the first of uh, uh, first of may and uh, whatever it was it it was the april yeah well it was the may contract yeah the may contract coming into delivery had a hundred thousand and you know that look what happened with that so you got to be really careful here so we're switching the operation now over to the august contract because that's going to be the next busiest one and it's a great trading vehicle but i'm just i'm just they have to make up this 200,000 contracts folks in order to get the players back in the market otherwise the players are not coming into the market so we have to pay very close attention to that and silver is certainly not acting that bullish you know it didn't have any uh, any breakout uh, capabilities yet as we can see and nor has platinum so those are just a few things that i'm watching you know we'll see okay let's move on uh, someone's asked another question about whether we are in a major depression or not uh the stock market is saying no the charts to me are saying yes but uh, we're going to be no matter how we come out of this i believe we're going to be uh, better off uh, I really think we're at a really critical se uh, segment here uh, in the in the United States, and if the Federal Reserve doesn't totally screw it, um, you know that's a pretty good. <laughs> we'll have to see. Yes, the natural gas has definitely got a high point up there at 214. We pointed that out several times, Bob. I hope you're able to to if you're in that, you're able to get out up in that area because it uh, it's a heck of a move, and there'll be more moves coming, of course. And the commodity markets are going to be picking up here pretty soon. We're already seeing we're not seeing any meat problems here in uh, in Tucson at all. And actually, Tucson today opens for business. Uh, the actual casino. Is going to open on Wednesday. I'm anxious to see how that works out. But uh, everybody, most everybody in Tucson is wearing masks, and uh, you know they're doing the social distancing. There's going to be a few restaurants opening, you know, with about 50% capacity. But you know, in two weeks, we're going to find out if we got a lot of deaths coming in, then we got to have to go back to ground zero and start out again. But I don't believe if uh, we uh, if they wait for this vaccine, by the time the vaccine is ready, it's going to be too late. That that's my two cents worth. And again, if you pay two cents, you overpaid. So we'll be watching that very very closely. Uh, uh, okay, all right. Let's move on here. Oh, there's a nice comment here by Mr. Z that uh, he talks about Andy Hector used to be a, a, one of the guys here at TFNN. Uh, the uh, details of the silver contract. He was Buffett used to be an institutional silver trader, so maybe that's why uh, he still uh, did that stuff with his uh, stuff. Okay, let's have another uh, section here. We got to go one. More. Hopefully, we'll have Bill Chapman here at the break to bail the old cowboy out, and then we'll move on uh, to the next one. I wanted to. Uh, share the uh, go into this Dow Jones chart one more time because it is a good chart. You know, there's 30, 30 stocks in the Dow. They're all uh, price weighted. They're not cap weighted. Boeing used to be the big one, but it isn't anymore. But the fact that we hit that exact 61% retracement means a great deal. And the reason why, look at the bottom here yesterday on the 6th, folks. That was when we were coming down. We made a perfect Gartley pattern at the 78% level. So I think it's important that 
that we pay uh, very close attention to that. If the Dow gets above uh, 24,300 today, we're probably going to be going higher. But we're in an up week, and we're coming into the last day of the week. And we're coming into this major stuff coming in on the the, uh, the astro stuff. We're going to see a lot of lot of activity on the 11th and 12th, folks. That's the one thing that the Bradley model does well, and that uh, it does pick you know key turning dates. So you want to watch that 11th and 12th. And we may we had Norm on the the show, and uh, he's had some really great hits. And uh, you know maybe it doesn't work, maybe it doesn't. Let the charts tell you. Just look at the darn thing, and you'll be able to see whether you're. Whether you're right or wrong here. Uh, uh, Larry Pesavento watches the markets 24-7, and now is a great time to try out his daily trading service, Fibonacci 24-7. Larry publishes videos and charts for subscribers throughout the week when warranted, and every weekend he puts out a thorough report covering worldwide markets, futures, commodities, and currencies with Fibonacci retracement levels, possible trading setups and zones, and stops and targets for all recommendations included. Larry applies the principles he's developed developed over decades of trading while analyzing a variety of markets for subscribers. To see for yourself the types of videos, charts, and analysis that Larry provides for his subscribers, sign up for Fibonacci 24-7 today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under the newsletter tab. You'll also gain instant access to Larry's archived subscriber webinar from earlier this year. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Sign up today. If you're a trader in the market looking to find the path that leads to maximizing profits while decreasing risk, then now is a great time to try out Dave White's daily trading service, The Path of Least Resistance. Through the use of options and equity trades, Dave advises his subscribers on a daily basis of the current market conditions and what possible trade setups are on the horizon. The Path of Least Resistance is published every trading morning, often with updates intraday when initiating trades or closing out positions. Dave White has advised his clients of some outstanding winning options and equity trades in recent months, and now is a great time to try it out for yourself. New subscribers to the Path of Least Resistance receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the types of options and equity trades that are available by signing up for the Path of Least Resistance today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com and selecting the newsletter tab. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed Designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks, and we have Bill Chapman on the line. Bill, how are you doing today? Very good. Very good, Larry. How about yourself? Uh, living the dream, baby. Staying on the green side of the grass. No, that's nice. I nice hear that you're still <laughs> vertical out there. How are you uh, doing with this volatility that we're seeing? Uh, well, we haven't uh, seen it, we've seen a compression in volatility, volatility over the past couple of months as we've become more and more, shall we say, uh, well, basically used to what's going on here with mm -hmm. the 
uh, COVID-19. Uh, so what used to be 20, even 30 point swings at a given point in time, we're now running through 10 and maybe uh, five and 10 point swings. But mm -hmm. part, that is partially due to the number of traders who are sitting on the sidelines right now mm -hmm. and not willing to put any capital at risk. I was speaking to a neighbor of mine who is a uh, fund to fund manager and out of all her professional clients, the hedge funds and banks, etc., they're sitting on a ton of cash and they are unwilling to move off of it until they get to see a clearer picture of what's happening down the pipeline. Mm -hmm. So they're waiting for what the Fed and the extraordinary measures that the Fed are taking. You know, they've gone right back to doing what they did. They pulled the playbook out from 2008 and have gone right back into using those tried and true methods of keeping this economy afloat. And one of the things that they've been dealing with quite strategically is credit. Now, they've gone, I think it's the 13-3 rule that they use for emergency uh, procedures within the Fed. But you can see that they've opened up, uh, you know, they're, they're going back and they're purchasing assets like 500 million in treasuries, 200 billion in mortgage backed securities. Mm -hmm. uh, that's basically a two stage process. But they're also intervening in the credit markets. So mm -hmm. the credit markets have been disrupted by this crisis. And by the fact that people are so uncertain about how long it will last and the cash flow implications. Mm -hmm. So you go back to the 2008 playbook. You take on <coughs> all the credit that you possibly can. And then you go beyond that. You use the 13-3 emergency powers. And you just use every facility that is allowed by you mm -hmm. to suck up essentially all the credit that is out there you know with the corporate debentures etc and now they're going to have you know, they're a, we have a uh, question from one of our listeners and that is is there a limit to what the fed can do i mean if we start there possibly is, there is no limit to what the fed can do keep in mind now the fed's balance sheet right now is only 30 percent of gdp you take a look at what japan has done in japan their balance sheet is 90% of GDP. Mm -hmm. And that's oh. what the Fed's, Fed's going to do. The Fed's just going to go throw money at this. I have a chart up which shows the credit liquidity programs and balance sheet um, and how they stepped up with total assets back in 2008 of 883 uh $883 billion to where they moved it up to $1.96 trillion. Bill, we're not in, seeing that chart. Is there any way that you could get uh, TFNN to post it for us? I've had several requests already. They, they don't see a chart in here. So uh, maybe when we come up to the break, if we could show that chart, they, there seems to be a lot of interest in it. Okay. Hopefully we'll get it up here. Maybe we'll get it going. Bill, we have another question since we're uh, – there you go. We've got it there. You see that. Uh, what, during, before we get into this, let's, let's finish this chart, and then I have another question for one of our listeners. So go ahead and show this okay. uh, credit. And so what you program. have here is prior to the 2008 crisis, 2009 crisis, where the Fed came out and they just upped their balance sheet by here it's $2.25 trillion. Mm-hmm. And then they just kept adding to the balance sheet right up and through 2013. And this is the 2015. And if you remember 2015, 2016, the stock market just went sideways. Mm -hmm. And then the Fed was finally starting to reduce the balance sheet. And it was going all according to plan. And they were going to be reducing this and reducing this and trying to get back down to this $2 trillion level. But it's right in here 
where Jamie Dimon said, you know what? We at J.P. Morgan, we see a recession coming, and we what we're going to do is we're going to roll our assets into fixed income, into debentures and into bonds. We're going to release a good portion of our equities. Oh, and by the way, we're going to take all of our money out of the repo market. Good luck, Jerry. And Jerome Powell, that's when on September 18th, he had to go and th throw $4 trillion into the repo market in order to stabilize the finances around the world. Wow. And as we went into this COVID-19 crisis, all of a sudden, the 2008 playbook comes out again, and up they go. So we're right now, what, $6.65 trillion in assets. Hmm. So it's been, it's been quite a haul. But a lot of people also ask me, okay, where, where do you see this market going? And, you know, this is where we are right now. We've been through 2018, came back, slid down. Everyone remembers this last quarter. And then mm -hmm. was just a steady climb until we got into the end of February. And this is where it was the last time we spoke, and I was screaming at you about how we're going to have a decline in this market. Now it's going to get mm -hmm. down. And then when we got down to here, I said, we're at or near the bottom. And I know you distinctly remember this because I was only 100 points and two days off mm -hmm. on my prognostication. It was an excellent call, you bet. But here's the thing. Where, where are we going forward? And when it comes to where we're going forward, I blew that up too big, huh? That's okay. We're good. We can see part of it. Where I see us going forward, where I see us going forward here is that we're right around in this territory. Mm -hmm. And I'm insisting that we're going higher here to possibly th um, just below where we were. Around 3,100 or something like that in the S&P? Uh, yeah, 30, possibly 3,411. Well, but break high, out to a it? new high and then break down from there. Mm -hmm. Break all the way well, down to the well, lows that. Hey, Bill, stay with us. Uh, we have a break to pay a few bills and we'll get right back with you, okay? Okay. Ben, we'll be right back, folks. Bill Chapman. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. The gold market has taken off topside in a large way in 2020. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report took profits in four of its equities in the gold portfolio in the first week of January for a combined profit of 99.2%, with two positions left in the portfolio that have a profit of 67.5% as of January 7th. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities.
To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large-cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus can contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. The Bull Bear Trading Hour with Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Next. Okay, we're back, folks, and we're talking with Bill Chapman. Bill, we have a couple questions from our listeners. It's the same question, but what are these numbers, 8, 9, 10, and 11? How are those derived? These are the numbers from the uh, Wells Wilder and Jim Sloman. And mm -hmm. okay. they're timing features for the charts out of the delta phenomena okay uh, the technical analysis measures that they used and i find them much like the fibonacci's where it takes 25 years to learn how to use it a lot of people <laughs> take a look at the delta phenomena and give up on it too readily because they just can't make sense of it so okay. it's basically along runs along the lunar cycles and the premise is that every four lunar years, four lunar months, four lunar days, markets will repeat either directly or inversely over time. Yeah, and we have a full moon today, don't we? we well, that was yesterday. And we have. Oh, yeah, it's yeah, that's right, yeah. It's interesting to see because we also move into the moon side of Sagittarius. Mm -hmm. And the moon side of Sagittarius, that's the. Uh, <laughs> that is the party animal of the uh, of the zodiac. Half man, mm -hmm. half beast. Think of him as the frat boy. You don't want to get in the way of the Sagittarian. You mm -hmm. really want to uh, stay. You know, follow your trend lines. Trust your trend lines and just go with the flow because Bill, if it starts in a direction it will run in that direction for the entire day we have a key bradley date coming in on the 11th and 12th it's a very large one uh, norm winsky was on last week and he was telling mm -hmm. us oh it was this week earlier in the week he was on wednesday and he said this is a really really big time on the 11th and 12th do you uh, follow any of that uh, i know you do a lot of astrology work but are you seeing the same thing that he's saying that i do have a uh proprietary indicator that I use, which I call my pay attention date, much like I have my pay attention times. The, uh -huh. the charts that I use or the report that I put out gives you distinct time points plus or minus five minutes where the market should turn. And these I call them not pivot points, but pay attention times because that's where you want to be because the market's going to turn due to a program. I do all my analysis on program trading, not on price. So one of the things I see within my proprietary pay attention day signal is the call went out on the 30th, was the last pay attention day. <laughs> and that was Thursday of last week. And as the market had been rising all week long, that Thursday, boom, dropped my clients knew in advance. In fact, they knew two weeks in advance. Now, Mr. Winsky is saying after May 11th. 11th and 12th is what he was uh, look, looking at. Well, um, 
I'm looking at my horoscope book here and yeah it could be I see it more in terms of volatility that vol volatility may uh, mm -hmm. pick up again and you either get a test of a support or you're going to break through a resistance mm -hmm. at that point in time I'm still okay. targeting I'm still targeting 3050 as the high side before we do get uh, any downside motion. But I also do believe that 3411 is in the cards before we finally decide to slide down through the remainder of the year. Okay. All right, my friend. Listen, how will the folks reach you if they'd like to look at what you're doing? You can uh, reach me at trendreaction.com and it's all set up there you can get a five day free trial the reports are I ask they're emailed to you an hour before the market opens print them out because you're going to want them in your hand as an easy reference as you're trading you can just pick it up and take a glance at it when's the next pay attention time what levels are we looking at because it's important is that when times and levels coincide, a run or a reversal is due in the market. Mm -hmm. what, are you, what are your usual stops when you're uh, working with the S&P, Bill? My stops, I, use, I take a, uh, an average, and depending upon the volatility of the day, mm -hmm. so that when I'm looking at the bars, I'm, I'm seeing what the displacement is on the bar, and I plus mm -hmm. a couple bars before that. And if it's six points, you know, one six points, one eight point, one is four points. There you have 18 points. So there's a nine point stop. Okay. Well, that's not much when you consider the volatility these things are having these days. That's for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And at well, the same time, you know, I'm watching the market as we're trading right now. And, mm -hmm. you know, we've come in and now we're starting to build up a position. We're at 2904.75 which happens to be resisted. the high of the day, the projected high for today is 29.10.75. Mm -hmm. So we're still working, you know, we've just gotten back inside the opening range on the five minute chart, and we're back inside the opening range on the one minute chart. So we're in neutral territory right now. We're just gonna wait for this to take some direction and one of our unfold through the remainder of the day. The one time that you want to pay attention to today, though, is 10 o'clock Central, 11.30 Central Time, and 13.30 Central Time. Okay. How Those many three times are related. Bill? Question is, how many screens are you using as you look at these things? Uh, I have four screens that I use, pretty big screens. Okay, okay great. Well, listen, thanks for joining us. We'll have you on again, and uh, we'll be watching these times. And be safe and practice your social uh, networking. <laughs> Just, uh, yeah, distancing, whatever it is. If, it isn't hard to do around these parts. <laughs> yeah, Nobody's well, going it, anywhere. Two, yeah, Tucson's opening up today. Uh, we're going to get our hair cut after about six, seven weeks now. So I look like a little shaggy dog with the few hair I do have left. So anyway, listen, you. thanks for being with us, buddy. And we'll have you You're on welcome. again soon. You're Great information. Welcome. Yeah, we really like it, folks. Okay. Bill Chapman, Trend Reaction. And we'll uh, get back to something I want to chat with here since we're talking about the markets here. I would like to uh, go back and take a look at this U.S. dollar index. We've got a break coming up here and then I want to uh, start it and then we'll we'll get finish it up as we uh, get into the last part of the show here <laughs> okay here we are folks this is the US dollar index you can see here since March the 30th <clears throat> we've been in a really tight trading range between 101 and 98 I believe we're going to break out of this range uh, if you ask me what direction I believe it's going to break out to the upside uh, the reason why I feel that way is because the euro, which is 53% of the dollar index, has a very, very bearish long-term chart that says the euro is going to go under par again. And we're only at uh, you know 108, so that's not very far away. So that's why I think that the dollar index has a very, very bullish bias. And why, I don't know, because you know our interest rates are you know <laughs> getting lower and lower. 877-927-6648. <clears throat>
I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. With markets trading with extreme volatility and peaks and troughs everywhere, regardless of what you're looking at in the markets, this is a great time to see the type of analysis Basil Chapman delivers for his subscribers every market day with the opening call newsletter. Basil has been analyzing markets, providing his take for subscribers to his trading services since 1984. Every morning, Basil publishes an update for his subscribers, along with weekend and evening updates when warranted. The opening call provides traders a daily market overview with regard to the direction of the key indices, selective stocks and commodities, along with specific recommendations, including stops and targets. You also gain instant access to Basil's subscriber webinar archive from earlier this year, a dark cloud cover and essential market analysis. Ride the Chapman wave today by signing up for the opening call newsletter on the front page of TFNN.com under the newsletter tab. New subscribers get a 30 day money back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Sign up today. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks. I want to spend a little bit more time on this U.S. dollar index chart, uh, and then I'm going to relate it to the euro, which is the most actively traded thing in the whole world. Can't be trading that because not many people can play with that one for very long because it's real money. You'll notice in this uh, chart of the U.S. dollar index that we've been in this long trading range for the past six weeks. I've already mentioned that, and I believe we're going to break out to the upside. And the reason for that is the fact that it's 53% of the euro, so we really need to look at the euro. So if we're going to put up this chart of the euro, just one second here, we'll get it up here, hopefully, and uh, we'll be able to see it. Okay. <laughs> Very good, Marshall. <laughs> okay. Here's the euro. Uh, you can see the volatility that we had with the market top to back there on February. We had to run up in the euro all the way up to 115. 115, it drops nine handles down to, uh, you know, when the market uh, started its big rally right at the bottom of the market. And now we've been in this really tight trading range, as you can see here, between 111 and uh, 107. And uh, we have lower tops coming in here. We're also having higher bottoms. So that's a pennant. You can see that it's a, you know, it's a perfect pennant. 
that uh, formation. So uh, we, we, we might go up and t- touch the other part of this at 109.50, but I don't believe we'll get much above that. But I'm watching for a break below this 107 level because if that breaks, folks, you're looking at a euro that's going to be priced about par. And uh, if you don't think it can get to par, it's been under par. It's been at 84 and 85 three different times. And from those levels, it all it went all the way up to 1.6. I remember when Sarah and I were on our honeymoon, we were in Europe when uh, it was one uh, it was one to 1. 1.6, <laughs> and I had to pay $9 for a Diet Coke at one of the hotels when we got in late with just a little glass of ice, and oh, $9. She never let me forget that. She reminds me every day. No, she doesn't. Anyway, that's what we're looking at here, folks. I think we've got a, a downward bias on the euro, and I'm just waiting to see once, once it gets below that 107. We're not far away. We're trading 108 and change, so we could get there very, very quickly. As you can see, when these things move, they move a lot. So we'll see on the flip side on Monday. Live every day in an attitude of gratitude and may God bless and be safe. 